Our basement dwellers and new viewers, I hope you're doing well. My name is Hector Alejandro Guerrero. I produce for The Basement Pod. And this one is amazing with William and Tim. You're gonna get a lot of game for life that you can implement right now in your relationships, in your career, and everything it is that you wanna to do to pursue growth. We got you covered. So let me cast a quick little bit of vision. We got the B-Side app where you can go if you wanna dive deeper with our community that we're building to walk and normalize vulnerability, go download and subscribe to the B-Side app. We're normalizing vulnerability. We're not complicating it. That's exactly what we're doing. And the B-Side app is alive and well. We have some new features that we are working very hard on to implement a powerful chat feature so that we can continue to not only talk about vulnerability and talk about community, but have it in our hands in our app that you're sewing into, that we're sewing into. This is our little baby that we get to grow together and it's gonna be special. We also got YouTube memberships for this basement channel. That means you're gonna see a couple people commenting with a cool little badge. It's a loyalty badge. They're gonna have a little press B next to their name. We're gonna have vlogs. Y'all know how much we love to vlog. All this type of extra content, Sometimes we'll have chats where it's just members only. And this is all for the YouTube platform. If you're diehard and you love hanging out in the YouTube world, like you think the B-side is cool, but you'd rather be over here, it's all good. You're still sewing into normalizing vulnerability. You can get a membership today, right now, and get access to all of our old membership blogs and the stuff we're putting out right now. So we love you guys. Sew into us, we sew into you. And the whole reason is because we want to normalize vulnerability. Okay, we love you and enjoy the rest of this episode. Peace. Please don't push me. Please don't push me, but y'all push B. Now we got dwellers from Cali to flat bush B. Now they got heat on their feet that say press B. And now we so deep in the streets, y'all can't stress me. Can't curse me. Then bless me. I'm crucifying my flesh. That's less me. S A T from preaching. Can't test me. Atheists are now believing. That bless me. Yeah, we got the basement replacing any of those worldly pursuits that y'all chasing. Any of those trials and tests that y'all facing. Any of the relationships that y'all changing. We we arranging, making the shame shift, giving Satan back what's his. That's the blame shift. Rise up and walk commands. That's the lame shift Cheat codes for living this life That's the game shift All on Yeshua man The rest is manure man I'm dying daily So I rise up a purer man Press and be daily So my sins looking fewer man Washing the blood So my sins down the sewer man Yeah So press be with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be uh, Yeah So press be with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be Welcome to The Basement, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Tim Ross. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being a part of this community. Shout out to Press B. Shout out to my dwellers. Shout out to my promoters. All you generous souls on Cash App and on PayPal. Thank you for giving us the type of support that keeps us out here without any stress. Listen, I got to dive straight into my guest today. I'm so excited. Uh... This man has been instrumental, not directly, but indirectly through his company, uh, Vanderblom and Search Group, uh, in helping us find an executive pastor when I was a lead pastor and uh, with the transition to my successor, Tim Rivers. He has written a book that I know is going to bless you all, and I cannot wait for you to read it. It's called Be the Unicorn. This book is going to give you cheat codes, something we always talk about here amongst our community as it relates to getting ahead and succeeding no matter what phase of life you're in. So whether you are in ministry or you're in the marketplace or you're single, dating, married, be the unicorn. Data-driven habits, 12 of them, that separate the best leaders from the rest. I'm introducing to some, but presenting to others, none other than William. Vander Blomans in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go! 
so happy you are here. Wow. <laughs> so the word of the day, I think, is decaf. <laughs> Let's make a switch. What do you think? No, 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 no. I'm naturally caffeinated. Okay. I don't drink coffee. I am naturally caffeinated. This is just the way I am all the time. I love I'm it. I'm excited when I get to sit down with people who have so much to give and to deposit. Hmm. And I know your time's limited, so I want to steward that time, and I want to dive straight into this. Yeah. I would love to get the background. Just come back another day. We'll talk about how you even started Vanderbilt and Search oh, Group. Oh, yeah, and all yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry We'll about do all that. that. This right here, though, this is language I use all the time. I think it's going to help some people. Yeah. I think it's going to help some people. We So we run a search firm, We, as you pointed out, and when the pandemic hit, you know, nobody's really hiring anybody. Yep. And churches and schools, like, like you know what I learned? Business lesson. If if every one of your clients closes indefinitely, it's going to affect your p and I think it is. So you can take that and use it and whatever. <laughs> That's a revelation. So, <laughs> fortunately, we, we, you know, we kept grain in the storehouse. We were, we were all set and ready to go. Yes, sir. And it gave us some time to do some research because I've always had this question that I've wanted the answer to, Tim. I don't know if you have, have you ever sit down with somebody and within five minutes you're like, that is a winner. Absolutely correct. Yes. Doesn't happen often. No, it does not. But every now and then you run into somebody who's just a little different than the crowd. They're just a little, I don't know. There's just, and I've always wondered, what is that? Yeah. Well, now I know what it is. Yeah. And I can teach it to you. All right. All right. Before you even go further. So what you're saying is that unicorns do not have to be the aberration. That's right. That's right. That these horns can actually be grown. That's right. You, I thought it was unattainable. So, little background. Yeah. When we do a search, and we've done a bunch of them now, all fifteen years running the company. When we do a search, you know, we might have like for your executive pastor, we might have fifteen hundred people that yeah. were, you know, maybe a candidate. Yeah. And then we whittle it down. Maybe we're dealing with one hundred and fifty or so, and yeah. then we do uh, phone interviews and we do zooms, and it whittles down, down, down. When you get down to the very last ones, the most talented people we run into. We give them a long face-to-face -face interview. Yep. Okay. Just a handful of people. Yep. We've now done 30,000 of those face-to-face -face interviews with the best of the best. And during the pandemic, we said, you know, it'd be kind of cool. And and I have I have crazy good detail people that work with me. Yep. 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 Like I'd call them OCD and they'd say, no, 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 it's CDO because that's alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's hilarious i've never heard that before i mean they, they're like yeah they're maniacal they're, yeah, for so, sure <laughs> for 15 years they've kept the data on everybody we've interviewed and wow. and not every interview is a cookie cutter right for they're sure. all different but there's a rhythm yeah right? for there's sure absolutely yeah and so we said Some trends I wonder, emerge that's right yeah and, and i said i wonder if we looked at those thirty thousand, could we figure out who the best of those were like even one layer better the unicorns and we found them like who got the job, who stayed in the job, who got promoted, who blessed everybody, who like who's the one that you sit down and within five minutes you say, Tim, that's a winner. We found them. So then we asked the question, they got anything in common? The answer is yes. And it was none of the things I would have expected. What? I would have thought. Okay, they've all got an IQ of 160 right. or something like that, right? <laughs> right. Nope, nope. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, uh, they all went to Ivy League schools. Nope, nope. All captain of the football team, head cheerleader. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, maybe all have great hair and shiny teeth. Right, you know, right. 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 <laughs> Six nope. feet tall. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> no, what they had in common was the way they treated other people and the habits that they showed in human interaction. And we narrowed it down to 12 of them. And we said, now, you know, here's the thing. For 15 years, people have hired me or my team to go find a unicorn for their team. Yes, right. I'm pretty good at spotting unicorns, but yep. now that we've done this research, I can teach you to become one. So these 12 habits are, you know, it's you read the book. It's a, it, if you want to fly through it and read it, you can read it on one plane flight. Yep. It's not hard. If yeah. you want to dive in and change your life, you're probably going to need to take, take a little longer, take yeah, a chapter sure. at a time. Absolutely. We're doing a workbook next year. There's yep. all kinds of things. Great. But these habits are just not rocket science. What they are, though, is they're very common among unicorns and exceedingly uncommon among the rest of us. And so now we, we've said... Okay, let's name them. Yeah. We even built a little software tool where you can test yourself and see where am I strong, where am I weak, yeah, yeah, how do great, I develop, great. teams can do it together and all that. But yeah. but that 
the main thing is to get this book in people's hands because here's the thing. It's never been harder to stand out of the crowd. Absolutely correct. You're Everyone's correct. got a megaphone. Every, every, Everyone's got a social platform. Everybody every, has everything. Everybody can be anything they want. That's right. And, and if you're in the workforce and you're trying to get ahead, there are five generations in the workforce. That's the first time it's ever happened in U.S. history. We've got five different generations working at the same time. And, and, and there's a sixth one people don't want to talk about yet, and the name of that generation is not X and Y and Z. It's Alpha. AI yeah. is oh, that wow. generation. 40% of jobs are going to go away in the next 10 years. Now, they'll get replaced by new jobs. There's just going to be a lot of churn. I mean, innovation's always eliminated some jobs and created new ones. Absolutely. That's fine. But you know? that's scary. But, but never, I don't, think, I don't think I've ever considered that 40% of the workforce could go away in one decade. Absolutely. We've seen it go away over like two two and a half, yep. maybe three, yep. right? Cars, automated, all that kind of stuff. But that's... Yeah, Twitter, I'm sorry, uh, Instagram, when it came out, it took, um, I think it took eight months for it to hit a million users, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, ChatGPT took five days. Wow. Wow. So it's coming. It's and here. And the way I see it, well, <laughs> right, okay, either we're in the prequel to the Terminator, right? <laughs> In which case, you know, we're all done, and Jesus yeah. is Lord, and we'll all be together in he heaven. coming to Texas. <laughs> I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> we're going to be okay. So, so either, either that, or we got to learn to live alongside it. And that means you got to learn to stand out. That's right. It's never been harder to stand out of the dating world. Mm -hmm. Everybody's swiping left, swiping right. I mean, like, yeah, you, yeah you you're right. How do you stand out as a parent yeah. when your kids are spending more time getting influenced by their peers on social media than That's by right. you? That's First exactly time ever. Right. That's exactly right. How in the world do you say it's not hard? How do you stand out when you're trying to share Jesus with somebody that doesn't want to hear about him? That's right. You stand out as an outstanding human. <laughs> and you nail these habits. You improve this part of your life. You're going to stand out in all those areas. And think about think about the impact you could make for the church. Think about how you could up your life, your family, your earning potential to yeah. bless your children, your grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be helpful. But I get a little excited. I probably ought to go to decaf. Nope. I wouldn't go to decaf, especially not on this. So now I'm incredibly intrigued and um, my curiosity is piqued. I, 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 I know for a fact, I haven't read the book. It just came out. You, you're giving me a copy that I probably can't even have. Um, uh, but with that said, um, uh, what are we talking about? I know it's not a rank between 1 to 12, right? Right. These are 12 attributes yes. that they all have. They're all floating around in there. That's right. They all, they all, they all manifest That's right. when they need to. What were some of those findings? What what were yeah. what were the some of the things that bubbled up to the top first? Well, there, there's a bunch of them. So so we thirty thousand interviews, and then we called down to the best, and then yeah. we got the twelve habits. Then we interviewed. We hired psychologists. We hired data analytics people. We built a, a survey, surveyed a quarter million people, so we could see what's the baseline for the population, all these things, and where are the unicorns, and how do people stack up, and all that. And you got <laughs> to see some pretty interesting patterns. Like one of the one of the uh, one of the habits. I started to call it the 12 traits, but it's not a trait. A trait's inborn. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. That's you know right. what? It's I can encoded. study Tiger Woods golf swing all I want. I ain't winning the Masters. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like, it's, it's just very not going to happen. That's right. But habits can be learned. That's right. It 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 requires more than buying the treadmill, though. you got to get on it. Mm. So very few people actually do this. Some, some of these come more naturally to unicorns than others, but one, let me just tell you the most... Uh, this is kind of funny. Uh, the, the most rare of the 12 habits is self-awareness. Okay? Most rare. So of the unicorns, which ones? We interviewed all of them, and we said, okay, what do you identify as your top habit of these 12? It was the smallest percentage of the people said, this is my top habit, wow. self-awareness. Okay. Interviewed or surveyed quarter million people. We asked question. We asked a lot of questions, but yep. one of the questions we asked for, for each of the twelve habits: Where would you rank yourself in this habit? Yeah, ninety-one percent of everybody we surveyed, quarter million people, ninety-one percent of everybody we surveyed said they are above average at self-awareness. <laughs> 
Now, I'm not like, uh, you know, applied math major or anything, <laughs> right, but right, right, right. 91% are never nah. above average. Uh -uh. His average is at 50. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So it's the, it's the least common of the habits and the one we've got the biggest blind spot for. We all think wow. we're good at it and we wow. stink at it. Wow. You know how many interviews I've done over the years where somebody said to me, and you walk through the whole career, and they say, yeah, I got fired from that job and it was my fault. Absolutely correct. You're not going to hear that. You can still count it on both hands. Okay, so I remember uh, uh, when we were uh, looking for an executive pastor, uh, and we had to look at some videos of some people, and I was dumbfounded that some of them could not hear themselves. Right. I, I, I literally was like, how? for one of them, I'm like, how did you even think to apply for this position. That's right. Like, That's it, right. But the lack of self-awareness makes people believe that not only do they belong places, let's take it out of that, that they are owed certain things in relationships. Let's put it in relationships. The lack totally. of self-awareness in the dating scene right now yeah. is, why, is why after probably three dates, sometimes two, we already have made a decision that we should not be. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. But they're above average. Yeah. They're above they're... average. No. <laughs> it's listen, always somebody listen, else's fault. This has changed so many things or it's enhanced so many of the ways I understand Jesus teaching. Mm. I used to think, you know, hey, before you get the splinter out of Tim's eye, get the log out of your own. And he's talking about don't be so hard on people. Everybody. Yeah. No, what he was really saying was, could you please get to know yourself? Mm. And when you do that, and you start leading with, well, here's what I'm learning instead of let me tell you what to do. Or I'm wondering, right, or, or asking questions, as I know you love to do. Yes, sir. You know, it just changes things. That's right. And it makes you more winsome as a person. Yes. When you can, when you can like, so you go to a job interview. And what's the dreaded question? Tell me about yourself. Yeah. Like, this is terrible. <laughs> right, Everybody right, hates right. that. The only, yeah. the only worst one is, tell me your greatest weakness. Right, exactly. And you say, well, I never Crypt asked for a raise, <laughs> and I work too many hours, and I can't tell the boss no. Those are my weaknesses. Right. No. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. Those ain't it. <laughs> Don't say that. We're going to find those out in 90 days. <laughs> tell, yeah, exactly. Maybe even sooner. <laughs> That's right. But tell me after three dates. Oh, <laughs> tell, me, uh, tell me about yourself. Well, I started walking at one. And then, I mean, like, where do you start? Yeah, right. <laughs> I started walking at once. <laughs> so, so here's how this should go. This is a this is a pro tip. Next yes, time you're in an interview, and and forty percent of us are going to be in an interview in the next ten years. Yes, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, here this book needs this to be out now, just for free, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Tim, I'm so glad that you're interviewing me to come on staff at the basement. I, you know, you know what energizes me about it? Here's what it is: you're moving fast. You're growing like a hockey stick, and that that just requires a level of agility. I bet everybody in this room has on their job description other duties as necessary. <laughs> like that's just part of being in a fast growth environment. Absolutely correct. And, Absolutely and, correct. And that is what I was born for. In my first company, we did. I was the third employee, and they asked me to figure out how to build the email list. And so they didn't even know what an email list was. So I started this. We started marketing. We grew the email list 10x. We started right when Twitter started. I got us online. I figured that out. We didn't know how to do that. Yeah. There's no manual. I love that. Yeah. If you want to hire me to come in and like reconcile your books or mm -hmm. audit things or do the same thing over and over every single day, you're going to fire me in about three days. Yep. Because that's just not me. Yeah. What I know about me, yeah. this is my Enneagram. Here's my disc. Yeah. Here's where I flourish. Here's where my previous work history shows that I get promoted when I'm put in these environments. And when I look at your environment, I say, oh, man, am I excited about that. That's a little bit about myself. I'm interested. You see what I do? You, and if you're interviewing with the wrong job, go get a different interview. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's so, yeah. But, but you won't be happy if you're not in a place that matches who you are. That's right. And not every job is, I mean, you really don't want to hire me to be your accountant. You, we'd no. both be in jail. No, I, It'd be I, bad. I, it, it, so, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I don't look good in orange. <laughs> yeah, me either. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. No, that is, that is, oh, man. So just think, you know, if you've got that level of self-awareness and you've got to sit down with a teenager saying you just don't understand. 
because parents just don't understand, right? Doo-doo, doo. That's it. Uh-huh. That's it. <laughs> you know, I don't understand. Yep. I remember when I was your age and I thought I knew everything. And now I just don't understand. But here's the things I'm learning about me and what I wish I'd have known when I was a younger man would have saved me a lot of stupid tax. Mm-hmm. That's a different parental conversation. Absolutely correct. I just think, you know, people, all I want to do is point people to the habits. Yep. And what we, we, we did a case study on a famous entrepreneur that's each of these habits. We did interviews with unicorns, say, what have you learned about this? And then we did a, here's how you will apply this in your life. Yeah. So this is basically just points you in the right direction, get you asking the right questions, and then how you manifest that in your own life. As long as you try and apply it, it'll come out just for you. I, I, the, the, so, so I am a lover of people that do research because mm. I don't have time, <laughs> right? So Brene Brown yes. is my sister from another mister. Hey, she right? lives about two blocks up from me. Are you serious? Come on over for dinner one night. We'll go see her. Please don't tell me that you're joking. Cause no, I wanna, no, our dogs know each other. I want to We don't know each other real well, but Pearl, my poodle, <laughs> and Lucy, her dog, they they walk the neighborhood. So <laughs> I just want to be, let me go walk your dog and hopefully yeah, I can just I'll run see into if Pearl it. can get you an invite. Please. That's what I need. <laughs> so so I, what I love is that this is researched and it's not just heartfelt. It's not just God gave me a revelation about the end time workplace right <laughs> exactly like like the, the 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 data shows it the research proved it and then you were able to aggregate it and 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 quantively uh, uh quantitatively be able to say this will work for you if you do it yeah if you read the 12 habits you're going to say well I would have guessed that well I would have guessed that why well, I'm tired of guessing I want to know. Mm, I want to know. And not just know, know how. Know and know how. There's a lot of people that know. People know they should quit smoking. They can't stop. That's right. People know they should go on a diet or or at least have like a well-maintained exercise routine. But they don't do it. You can't just buy the treadmill. You got to get on it. That's it. How many? Peloton is rich off people who were inspired for the first 120 days. That's right. And have not canceled their subscription. That's right. They don't care that they haven't been on that bike. That's right. In thirteen months, That's collecting right. dust. And and I guarantee, and I, you know, you're. I think every listener out there's probably got somewhere in their life they need to stand out for sure. But if we all do this together, if we're on Team Jesus and we're doing this, all of a sudden there's going to be a bunch of really likable people. You sit. I'm sitting down next to this guy. Within five minutes, I want to be like him. I want to learn about him. And boom, let me tell you about what really fuels me. It's not a book about unicorns. It's a it's a much much deeper thing than that. Okay, so 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 this is this is this is just this is blowing my mind. I just peeked at all the attributes, and I'm sitting here, and I'm like, this is this is a basement book. Mm. This is a basement book. Mm. Like literally, the language in this book by chapter is everything we talk about here, verbatim. Like not like oh we we kind of. Do you know what one of the tips is that I just saw? Be authentic. Be authentic. Be self-aware. Be authentic. Are you kidding me right now? That's right. Some of them are simpler than that. Get back to people. (laughs) Just get back to people. Do you know how rare that is? So like, so, okay, can I geek out for just a minute? Please geek okay. out. I'm going to geek out you a little bit. You have full so, permission So to we geek don't out. cold call people and say, would you like to take another job or would you need to do pastor? Da, da, da. No. Our whole goal as a company, because I've, I've dealt with people like that yep. and I felt like I have to take a shower after I talk yeah, to them. Understood. I don't want to be that, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. So we said from the beginning, what would happen if we just started creating free resources and keep putting them out there? We did start right when Twitter started, like the same month. And so we were just perfect storm. And so people come to us. Right? Correct. So Correct. we use this thing called inbound marketing. Okay. And it pro- probably everyone listening has done this. You know, you're interested in a, a car, so you fill out a form online, and somebody's going to get back to That's you. Right. Right? That's or right. Or you visit a church, you want to send me more information, somebody will get back to you. This is inbound marketing. Yep, okay? absolutely. So inbound marketing is really interesting. When, when we started, <laughs> it was, Tim, we had six kids, 
and I'd just gotten married to Adrian. We just blended our families, and I, I saw an executive search firm work in the corporate world, and I remembered how bad churches were at doing this, and I'm like, why does the bride not have a better solution than the business world, mm. right? And that just said, and so I went home and I said, hey, babe, I think I'm supposed to quit my job and start something new for churches. And my wife, bless her heart, <laughs> she looked at me and she said, oh, that's because churches love new ideas, right? Mm. Right. She should have said, love you, baby, and I love you dreaming. <laughs> right, 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 I'm right, right, Remind right. me of Joseph. You know, you got it going on now. Go back to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, exactly. she should have, that's what she should have said. <laughs> right, right, right. But she said, let's give it a try. So well, all that's to say, when we started, we had nothing. We started on a card table. We had very little money and, you know, brand new family. And so if you filled out a form and said, William, would you please get back to me? I might need you I to help. I bet you you got back. I got back to him, like, <laughs> real fast. That's exactly right. And can you come see us? I remember first one, first church said... You know, please come see us. And I was on site meeting and a hurricane rolled into town. I called, I'm going to be there at nine. They're like, dude, there's a hurricane coming. <laughs> and you're like, like, I need this. I got, I'm going to, I'm coming. I'm coming. Right. You can, you can skip if you want, but I'm going to be there. Right. Exactly. And, <laughs> so oh they my goodness. talked me into postponing. They ended up signing. We had steak that night. It was amazing. First deal we ever did. But it all is to say, I, I just kind of, and, and it matches who I am. I kind of am pretty maniacal about getting back to people. It's pro I probably could talk to Brene Brown or a therapist or somebody yeah, about yeah, it yeah, and get, yeah. get straightened out. Yep. So when we start this inbound marketing, I was reading a study. And the study was asking a question. How much does it matter how quickly you get back to somebody when they fill out a form? Okay, so they measured response time. If you respond within X, what's the percentage chance that you get another conversation? Because in sales, really, all you want is the next conversation. That's right. It's, by the way, listeners, that's the same when you're talking about Jesus. You don't need to close the deal every time you talk to people, but just move it to the next conversation, right? Just the next conversation. Because Jesus is so winsome, he won't be turned down. It just might take a little time, <laughs> right? <laughs> Okay, so back yes. to this back to this study, right? Please keep talking. <laughs> back to this study. So they sur surveyed all these companies that use inbound marketing all across all business sectors. And what they found was if you if somebody fills out a form and you get back to them within 60 seconds, you have greater than 98% chance of hearing from them again. It's like money in the bank. You boom. You wait 20 minutes, it drops to 60%. Wow. Because they're on to something else. They're on right. another platform. Absolute, I mean, I do correct. it. I'm on email, and they, yeah. wow, they just emailed me back, and it yeah. wasn't a chat bot. It was right. like a thoughtful response. Yeah, yeah about for sure. The Cowboys are going to come back after that bad <laughs> game last week. It's going to be okay. Oh, wow, they were paying attention. <laughs> yeah. You, just a simple human That's right. response. That's absolutely right? correct. If you wait 24 hours, you have a less than 1% chance of hearing from your potential customer again. Okay, punchline. Average response time for everybody that takes this survey that's paying all this inbound marketing money and paying all these marketers and salespeople, average response time, 42 hours. They're negative. They're wasting their time and money. The quarter million people we surveyed <laughs> had another one where it wasn't 91%, but it was a whole lot more than 50% said, well, we're above average in responsiveness. <laughs> so we had uh, uh, you know, Survey Monkey ran the... <laughs> the software for us. Uh -huh. And so we call the people at SurveyMonkey. We're like, what's a fast response time when you do a survey? I mean, you've done more surveys than anybody in the world. What's fast response time? They're like, yeah, the fast people are going to get back to you in a day or two. Average wow. response time for that question, six days. So, <laughs> And they <laughs> were, said we're, we're back to self-awareness. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's <laughs> so, exactly right. But it's just not hard. If you just get back to people quickly and in a human way, yeah. you will stand out in the crowd. Yeah. We even looked at, like, what's the average response time for people on dating sites? These are people that are dying to meet other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. They wait too long. Absolutely correct. They wait too long. It's like, are you an idiot? This is not hard. Right, absolutely. Just get back to... so. I, I point that out to say these are simple things, but yep. there's data to show right. how rare they are among people, yep. which means you got some low hanging fruit. It's this is not cheat code stuff. Hard. This is cheat code stuff. Okay, so so when I was when 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 I transitioned from the Potter's house, I went back into itinerant ministry. I um I couldn't afford an admin, right? So I was essentially my own admin, and. We didn't. We never had a number to call, 
we had a, I can't believe I'm saying this. I have, I don't think I've ever said this publicly. If anybody remembers me from back in those days, you're going to be like, no, did you lie to me? Not really. <laughs> so what had happened was I had to be my own admin, right? But if you're your own admin, you don't want to say that it's you. That's right. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so you're, you're trying to have this, you know, layer where a little, where you little can, bit of Oz. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. going in there, right? So, so Livingston, which is my son's one of my son's middle name, because in Caribbean culture, my my wife's uh, Afro Caribbean, so in Caribbean culture, you have to um, lots of names, lots of names, right? So he is uh, he is Noah Livingston, uh, Noah Samuel Livingston Ross. So I took Livingston, and Livingston became my pseudonym for my admin work. That's awesome. As <laughs> soon as an invitation came in. Livingston was on it. Livingston was on it. Do you know the first 31 days? I only had two engagements for the entire year of 2011. Mm. Okay. And they were both in January. <laughs> so I'm like, at least I guess my mortgage is going to be paid for January. <laughs> do you know, I, do you know by the end of January, I came home with two thirds of my annual income that I was making at the Potter's house. Wow. And by the end of that year, I had made three times what I was making at Potter's House. Wow. You probably got back to people. At Livingston, got back to people. I got back to people. Yeah. And from that day to this, and even if there is a lapse, right, because you're not perfect and sometimes right. things fall through the crack, I don't just get back to them as if I don't know, which goes back to self-awareness, right, right. That, that they've been waiting. I apologize for the delay in response. I give them the reason why. I don't care if they accept the reason. They are owed a reason because I said I'd get back to you Thursday. If I didn't, I want to give you the reason why, and I want to make it up, and is there a new date? And if you had that much success, I'm going to make a guess. I'm going to make a prediction that when you gave the reason, it was something you messed up. Absolutely. It was not, oh, the traffic, I no. got stuck. Oh, no. somebody else did this to me. The, I messed up. You know, because the, the, the human nature, the human nature say, oh, I... That woman you gave me made me eat the fruit. That that woman that you gave me. <laughs> and the woman said, no, the serpent you made, he made me do it. That's right. That's human nature. That's exactly right. And what right. stands out of the crowd, and it's it's part of this authenticity piece, yes. is when you say, yeah, no, that was actually totally on me. It's yep. not how I usually roll. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. It was an aberration. I want to get back to you. I'm usually on time. And and if it is an aberration, it doesn't happen over and over again. It doesn't mean right. you're not apologizing it for it over and over and over That's again. That's exactly right. So so if we can make because I feel like this, I feel like this book is now like um because I see everything in pictures. So so now I'm looking at this book like this is a you're you're now a horn manufacturer. <laughs> <laughs> like this book is giving people horns. Like, like, again, the, my first thought are unicorns are rare because not everybody can be it. And if you can grow to be one, yes, you are going to stand out. Yes. The, I cannot, book, the book originally, we wanted to go with something stand out. And it, it were a bunch of really sort of safe choices. Yeah. And I just kept having this picture, you know, what stands at the unicorn does? What That's do people right. hire me to people hire me to go find the unicorn? Absolutely correct. I was like going back and forth with the publisher. They were wonderful. Yeah, but they didn't want unicorn. Yeah, I got home from a conference where busy. You got if you don't use unicorn, I'm using my next book. Like yeah, this was kind of. And I got home and you walk in our front door and Adrian's office is on the left. She runs the world. And uh, on her desk, we'd got the kids. We have a little pool and mm -hmm. we'd get like a new float thing every summer at the beginning of the summer. Mm -hmm. Guess what float was on her desk? Get out of here. A unicorn. A little bitty unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> so we went for it, and I think it's exactly the right picture. It is. It's the perfect picture because it it already gives this mythical, rare, you know, imagery to people. And if we're telling people we can make you one, that you don't just have to be a stallion, right? Because what what when you can't find a unicorn, what do you settle for? That's a right. thoroughbred, now, a stallion. Me, now this is this this is going to send the book sales down. I cannot make you one, but I can show you the data driven path for you to become one. Well, in the same it's way, it's on the, you. A Peloton won't make you in That's shape. That's right. That's right. <laughs> a gym membership won't give you a six pack. That's right. 
it gives you the tools and the access to be able to get one. Do you know the, the Hollywood actors have all these trainers that know the hacks? Yes, they do. And they, they don't know work how to out get, that much, but they know how right. to get the most out. Of, and that's what this book will do for you. <sighs> okay. Um, I saw something else in there that I, that I think is worth talking about. Be curious. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had the... I got here early, and you know when you show is it is this not everything that we yeah. this is literally all we talk about. And I, I when you show up early, you get to learn things. That's and I right. showed up a little early, and I heard you know a previous podcast, and y'all were talking, and I'd known it was big, but I'd never heard he, he had an amazing theologian here that I've known for years previously, and he said Jesus asked like was asked like 120 questions or something. I, yep. don't, I don't know what the number was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like 90 of them, he answered the question by asking another question. That's exactly right. And, and if you read it in the Greek. <laughs> Which, uh, yes, I'm that much of a nerd. Oh, uh, <laughs> do you know? Me a, too. Do you know a Greek? You know a little Greek? Yes, I do. Oh, good. I do too. Yeah. He's a tailor. Uh huh. I took him my pants. <laughs> he looked at me. He said, Euripides. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I said, Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I said, Yeah. He said, I'm in a <laughs> That's so bad. That's it's, so bad. But it qualifies as a I good dad joke. I just wasted 60 seconds of a great podcast. It qualifies as a great dad joke. It helps that R.C. Sproul is the one who told me that. So that, 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 That's legendary. That now. helps. But it just elevated it. <laughs> anyway, in the Greek, Jesus is asked a question. And if you were to like write it out in English word for word, it would say, so Jesus answered the question by asking them a question, and he asked them asking them. Like, they just keep using yes. the word over and over, like, just in case you missed it. That's right. There are more efficient ways to write that, but they, the, the, the writers of the Gospels are like, we're going to need to home. understand yeah, yeah, yeah. curious yeah, absolutely. is a really good thing. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. It's the reason why he came. Yes. So he could know. Yes. He's tempted in all points, yet without sin. Why? Because he wants to know. How can you be and curi an curiosity advocate? Is is the journey absolutely correct? First question in the Bible. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a where are you? Where are you? Where are you? First Do you know where in, you are? First question in the New Testament. Where is he? Wow. I never thought about it. Mm. I never thought about it. Isn't that good? It's better than good. It's, we were made in his image, and he's curious. And the unicorns are the one who don't just keep their head down and like a sheep looking for the next tuft of grass and end up walking off a cliff. Could, well, I could, wonder what I could add here. What's the value? Why is this? Why that? All right, so, so William, this is a cheat code. <sighs> this is a cheat code for everybody because without curiosity, you are going to be in the 40%. That's right. That's it. That is absolutely right. Without curiosity, there is nowhere else for you to go because you're not, you, you don't want to learn any more than what you already know. That's right. I, I think this is why a bunch of churches shut down when the pandemic hit. Well, what would we do? We don't know what to do. Instead of, well, how do we fix this? My mother goes to this wonderful, traditional First Presbyterian church, little town in the woods of North Carolina. Like, it's... Just think of like traditional normal, like the carpet is blood of Jesus red and the white <laughs> columns and the whole, yeah, the whole deal, right? I see that church. They got a brand new pastor in the end of 19 and he had a, and a young guy and a lot of new ideas. And you know how this works sometimes. Yeah. You go to the traditional old church, you put a new guy in, it doesn't work. When the pandemic hit, he was like, I'm going to figure out how to live stream. He had his 12 year old hold a camera. <laughs> it was the most duct tape paper clip set up, but it worked. Wow. He was curious enough to say, I wonder how we could do that. Yes. I wonder how we could do that. I I am uh I'm so excited for this book to be in the hands of our dwellers. Um, and to be in the hands of people that want to grow. Absolutely. And the place to grow right now, Tim, is how to deal with one another. It's human interaction. Because you're gonna you think you're dealing like the number one problem from the pandemic was not the number of deaths in the coronavirus. And if you lost somebody, I'm not minimizing your loss. Understood. Loneliness mm. was the greatest illness to come out of mm. 2020. Mm. Mm. And it's the, you know, the talk about firsts. Yeah. What's the first thing God curses? 
Oh, uh, um, uh, he he curses. Oh, oh, why am I having a brain freeze? Let me on this? let me help you because I, I, I another thing a great theologian taught me. God starts the world and he says, "Okay, let there be light." And he says, "Good." He says, uh, "Whatever's next in the order, I'm not." <laughs> right, good right, 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 right. You know, there's a bunch of stuff. Gets good, good, good. This is good. This is good. This is good. All benedictions. Right, and then he makes humans, and he says, "Now that's very good." Yeah, you know, wow. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, for sure. Very good. And the next thing he says, "It is not good mm. that we be left alone." I wasn't prepared. It's the first malad prepared. First malediction in scripture. Wow. Right, the first curse. Now think about this: he cursed something before sin entered the world. So, like, the world gets shut down and you're told not to deal with anybody. You got a problem. It's going to be even more when computers start to take over and, and they take over jobs. And the, and the people who will make it are the people who will study how to be better with one another. I was on a panel at a, a small sort of invite gathering for Christians who are trying to build an innovative business. Mm-hmm. And it, and it was just a few hundred people, and they had breakouts. And they, they had a breakout on uh, artificial intelligence. And they, it was hilarious. The name of the, the breakout was, what should we title this? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> I, I love it. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I went, and it was, there were only 50 people allowed in there. I think 49 of the people in the room were coders, right? Wow. And me. Curious. So, coders and, and coders and curiosity. Well, they, and then so we did, it was all panel. So the three people yep. on the panel is a guy who's been doing AI for a defense contractor, mm -hmm. uh, another guy who's built two or three companies with AI over the last several years, and then uh, the woman who's chief of staff for Google, who's head of all their you know AI stuff. Yep. So they're a pretty brainy group. Yeah, for sure. And the questions were all like, "Well, I'm using Python and blah, 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 all this coding. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah I'm, for sure. So might as well been Greek. Right, I right. Exactly. I don't know that Greek. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. So. Uh, you know, somebody looked at me at one point and said, so you hadn't asked a question, what's your question? I said, uh, I got a high school senior. What should I tell them not to major in in college? Mm. And that it, it was kind of the way the room went, too. I was like, ooh, hit a nerve, you know. And uh, they wouldn't answer the what not to take. Yeah. But the chief staff, Google, looked at me and said, tell them to, tell them to go to a liberal arts college and get a liberal arts degree. Well, that cuts dead against the grain of all the STEM, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Said, Why is that? And she said, because the people who know a liberal arts degree have enough of an education about enough different things that they can have a conversation with any other human. And the human relations is where it's going to be for human workers going forward. That's what unicorns do. Wow. All right. I know your time is limited but you have cooked my brain well done <laughs> in a very short amount of time. I am, I heard everything you just said and I am still stuck on what you just showed me in Genesis two. I have never even considered good, 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 very good, not good. C.S. Lewis's mentor was quoted as saying, um, hell is God's granting of our final wish to be left alone. That is sobering. That is very, very sobering. Well, I'm, help I'm hoping we're mo moving into a new age. Period. And people can get on board with it or get passed by. Absolutely. And, correct. and I think everyone listening today, God was so excited when they were born yeah. and wants them to exceed, yeah. wants them to excel, wants them to rise up out of the crowd. Yeah. And, and I can't say, I'm going to turn you into unicorn, but I can show no. you the path. I can no. show you the path and the data backs it up. Well, well, I, I, I appreciate the disclaimer, but not but. I appreciate the disclaimer, William, and... I think it's important to spur people on to do the freaking work. Don't sit here and say, I can't get better. No one's hiring. 
I've been trying, it's not working. And then resources like this come out and you pass on it. The man told you you could read it on a plane. The page count is 199 pages. 201. And there are even some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> he even gave you some pictures to distract you. Okay, listen. In the same way that I endorsed Never Split the Difference by my mentor, um, Chris Voss, don't tell me that you don't stand out. Don't talk to me that no one notices. And we bring people like this and you ignore it. The cheat codes have been given. The book is out. You need to buy it and you need to read it. Get on the treadmill, get on the Peloton, get into the gym and come out with the horn. And, it, and if you need a good first step, I mean, first step is buy the book. But then Absolutely. you want to build your self-awareness first. That's the rarest gift. Yes, sir. We built a self-assessment tool. Great. People can go to. It's called the Vander Index, and it'll show you, oh, I'm good at these, so let's put off that. I'm not good at these, so let's burrow down, and instead of reading it on a plane, let's take those four habits I need to grow in, and let's build one out a month for yes, four sir. months. Yes, sir. And build really your own good. development plan. Absolutely correct. And so you, you could literally take this book, Based on the assessment, if you decide to do the assessment first, I'm a nerd, I would definitely do the assessment sir, first. Based on what he just said, the way I interpret that is, you don't have to read this book in order. That's right. If you got some stuff that's already at the top, then maybe you start with the 11th thing. Choose your own adventure. <laughs> yeah, choose your own adventure. But get through it, cheat code yourself into growing a horn that will allow you to stand out. It's great to be a grinder. I'm so grateful that you're a thoroughbred, you're a stallion, you're doing stuff and people are noticing you. If you have a horn, it's a completely different trajectory. I'm telling you what I know because I'm already a unicorn. You're talking to two unicorns. You can't write the book if you don't have a horn. So please do yourself a favor. Get this book and get cracking. Let's go. William, thank you for your time. Tim, I know it was so very, very brief. Dwellers, you know, we never do pods this short. But this is short and sweet because we had an agenda today. This book is going to change your life. I love you guys. William, thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. I Always a joy. I appreciate y'all so much. And until next time, peace. Yeah, so press B with me and let's let whatever gon' be just be. Uh, yeah, so press B with me and let's let whatever gon' be just be.